you want all of it? I want all of it. I mean, what about Maybe this? not this no. way, but all that way. No. Do you know which one I love is if you look straight down the middle there, yeah. that like floral skirt. It's beautiful. It's very and very, and it's very your vibe. Yes. I might pinch that for my Game of Thrones finale party. Oh. I'm going as Lady Sansa. Do you know that I've never watched Game of Thrones? I'm one of those people. Yeah. No, never watched it. How? <laughs> is that a thing? Because I actually sadly, or maybe not sadly, but have to admit that I only became like a series person at the end of last year. Okay. Welcome to my wedding. Um, at the end of last year, when Tully's wedding diary was Hilarious. Hilarious. So I'd never watched series before. And I downloaded Showmax, the 14-day free trial, <laughs> to, to watch Tully's Wedding Diary. And then, you know how it says, uh, because you like this, you may like that. Then I watched Big Little Lies. Then I got into Handmaid's Tale and the rest of So what were you doing with all your free time, exactly? No, I, I uh, it, it was raining in Cape Town. <laughs> <laughs> so it was raining in Cape Town. What, what else okay. do you do when it's raining in Cape Town? Um, you can't go to the beach, you can't cycle on the promenade, which are my two favorite things to do in Cape Town. It's true. I just avoid Cape Tonians in Cape Town. Good morning, Tea Tribe. Oh my gosh, we are here in the Diamond Walk at Santa City. Yes. Joined by some of the most unbelievable vintage fashion pieces from the 1950s to today. And uh, my incredible co host for today, Jenna Dover, who you may recognize from KTV days. And I other totally, things, Terry. Totally, no, wait, hold on. I totally was girl crushing this morning when I was on my way here thinking, I used to watch you every Saturday. I used to wake up really early and watch uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles were my favorite, like as a cartoon, mm -hmm. but I would watch you on KTV and Thanks. those were good times. They were such good times for you. <laughs> For me, not so much, because, you know, it's so weird. I always tell people, I'm like, you guys had KTV, you got to experience Reggie's Rush, Simba Surprise, all that stuff. But <gasps> my childhood... the Reggie's Rush. Everyone, oh, my gosh. You know, grown-ass men come up to me, like, in the mall... Yeah. ...and constantly go on about Reggie's Rush. But that means you haven't aged at all. Because they still recognize you. No, it's seriously. True. It's true. I think we should have an adult Reggie's Rush right here in the Diamond Wall. Okay, I'm Diamond Wall. Starting in Louis Vuitton. This is happening. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. No, this is totally happening. And also, um, what was the Sonic Ford Ford Grab? Ford 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 Grab. I used that to watch that. Yeah, that. that was sponsored by Wimpy. That's all uh, I remember. And when okay. someone sat on a shoe. Um, but you know, if you're making something, it loses the magic because you're not receiving it, if yes, you know what I mean. Yes. So I never had that from my childhood. The only thing I probably could relate it to is maybe the Mickey Mouse Club. Also you know? loved the Mickey Mouse Club. That's cool. I'm actually doing a show at the moment where we're reenacting like a Mickey Mouse Club sort of thing. Only minus Brittany and Justin. <laughs> <laughs> and Christina. But Taryn and Zakia. But, but there I am. <laughs> with the vocals to match. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why no one has dis not discovered you yet. I don't I know. know why RMI I know. have not called you. EMI, I RMI. RMI are a holiday package company. Uh, yeah, that's RCI. Oh. <laughs> EMI. <laughs> Never mind. EMI is the record label, Got which you. stands for something in music, something. Thank you. Thank you for that yes. um, knowledge that You're you welcome. just imbued to me. <laughs> <laughs> so it's been a really crazy week, other than remembering that you are on KTV. <laughs> because. You know, there's other people that people run up to in the streets, will try to at least, but there's no security. There was no security with you, but she's got a lot more security, and that is the queen. The queen. Who posted her first Instagram? I got, Did you I, see that? No, and I'm, I was trying to find it now while we were okay, walking. Okay, no, let me show it to you. What does she look like? What does the queen look like? In, in her selfie. <laughs> so there's the queen. Is that the Instagram post? That's the no, so she okay. posted about, um, she posted about science. That's what she posted about. So it was, she was making a comment and saying that a number of years ago, she started an initiative that had a lot to do with sort of scientific development and how proud she is and how far it's come. And she signed the tweet as the queen of England. Imagine. So it was posted on the Royal, it was posted on the, the queen does not have her own Instagram account. It was posted on the I Royal I would slide family. up in your DMs, girl. <laughs> I would slide up in the Queen's DMs. Yes, yes. Queen. Queen, tell me, how do you put your outfits together? Yeah, one thing I love is she always has the bag to match the hat, to match the blazer, to match the skirt. It's just... I mean, that is matching goals for me. Like, that's it's, really It's matching. matching. I could never live with that level of commitment. So, so she's just fabulous. Fabulous. She is fabulous. I went to Ascot once, actually, you know, the horse yes. race. Yes. And so she, every year she does like this trot around the, the track in her carriage and waves at the spectators. 
people. That, that is not how she waves. She waves. Uh, like apologies. This. Yeah, that's how Jenna waves. <laughs> yeah. Yes. It's more of a. Just a slight twist of the wrist, but the whole stadium, if you could call it that, just comes to like a standstill. Yeah. People stop what they're doing to go and see their beloved queen in her little carriage going around the track. They, she's very beloved there. That is, for me, it's a, I've got an aunt that was born in England. She now lives in Australia, but there's some kind of, um, it's not even, is it like patriotism? It's patriotism, but to another level. Like they wanted flags from the royal wedding of the Queen's Diamond Jubilee. Mm. Like it really is a thing. And people, people collect people's faces on mags and stuff. I mean, I, when it was the royal wedding of uh, Harry and Meghan, my friend sent me pictures of Marks and Spencers. You could get rusks that were like, were in a limited edition tin. I mean, I totally asked her to get me one. I also asked <laughs> if it was gluten free. I feel like if we go into your house, we're going to happen upon a cabinet I've filled with this <laughs> shit. <laughs> Are we allowed to swear on this I podcast? I'm a little bit of a hoarder. I Are you? Say. Like, not in a creepy way where, like, I've but got But does it spark joy, things. Taryn? It does because I'm like, I, I could need that polka dot red bandana in 10 years when I've got to dress up and I have to be the Mickey Mouse Club. Oh my goodness. Could need it. If could I could give it. away my right arm, I would. Really? Yeah, I'm not a hoarder at all. I, know, I love I Kanye West's house. Have, have you seen it? It's literally got like a chair. Yeah, it's minimalistic on another level. No, I like stuff. <laughs> I like a lot of stuff. Okay. And I also, I and, and not that I'm materialistic, but like I love. Like if I've got, let's say, the tin from the wedding, like I need to keep that because... Do you know I what I, I do have? I kept the newspaper, the star newspaper. Ooh, that's hot. That is hot tea. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> spill it, come on. Let me spill this hot tea. No, I kept the, the star newspaper from when Madiba died. It's still like in the packet, you know, still have it. And I've kept that in storage. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. I'll probably give it to my kids. Yeah and let them have a look at it. But you know what, like, I also feel like today, even with newspaper cuttings and things like that, if you have an article or you have a story or something like that, you don't actually have to keep the physical thing because you can keep a digital copy. It's true. Although I'm still one of those people that has a Kindle but loves to read actual books. And feel a book. Yeah. There's nothing like opening a book mm. and smelling that brand new. I mean, I'm also like about recycling. Exclusive books is like crack. You go in there and you're just like, yes. Damn. Exclusive books at the airport. People are like, oh, duty free. I'm like, exclusive books at the airport, because then you can pack as many books as you want, and they're never going to tell you you don't have. And you space. always buy a book. You, I mean, some. I always end up buying books I never actually read. Do at, you at the airport? Exclusive books. So have you got a whole? See, you are a hoarder. So you've got a stash of books that you haven't read. Yeah. What was the last book you read? Uh, I'm actually in the middle of it. It's oh. Mandy Weiner's Ministry of Crime. Oh. That is cr that book is <laughs> crazy. You have you read any of no. Mandy Weiner? No. We are living among criminals, catch your pearls. <laughs> In Bedford oh, no, View. I don't have my Deadford. Deadford View. <laughs> Deadford View. Oh, no, no, you just, you drop the view. It's just. It's just Deadford. Deadford. I mean. Because yeah. stuff goes down there. Stuff goes it, down there. The Greek community is there. So I know a lot of the stuff. You know all these people. No, I don't know the people. I know the stuff that goes down. I hear about it because they live there. Let They're me see if Krejnia's <laughs> number is on your phone, please. <laughs> no, it's How do you spell that? <laughs> Lies, I know you know. <laughs> Um, no, at the at the, the Tashas, apparently all this stuff is going down. All these kind of deals are happening. It's the yeah. wild, wild west out there. But anyway, so that book. What about you? It is the East. Have you got <laughs> true? <True. laughs> Deadford. I'm actually reading Michelle uh, Obama's book, Becoming, mm. because we totally share a birthday. I didn't know that. Yeah, 17th of January, just a couple of years apart. <laughs> um, but we share a birthday, and this book for me is so incredible. Is it? Because it's more like. It's the kind of book that you highlight. It was like Year of uh, Yes, Shonda Rhimes' is Year of Yes. I've highlighted stuff in there. Like that's a book that you will revisit. So you can't get rid of it. You've got to keep Lots it. Lots of quotable quotes. Lots of, because you know, one of my nicknames is Quota Hunters. I love <laughs> So it. many good words coming out of this podcast. <laughs> Quota Hunters. You can quote me on that, <laughs> Quota Hunters. Um, so she, this book is like more of a sort of manual and more of a um, life skills, life lessons. And I think just, you, you don't have to be the first lady, but it's completely applicable. Mm. Um, and I love her. I mean, she's a Capricorn like me. Some of the best people you'll ever meet. Okay. Public service announcement. Um, <laughs> I don't know any Capricorns. But, but, oh, well, you do now. Number one. Hello. <laughs> and I'm, I'm not the best person you've ever met. <laughs> Literally the best. Why not? It has happened. It's all going down <laughs> today in the Diamond Walk. 
while they're cleaning the floors and all yeah, that jazz. Know, this is real life. This is actually what happens. And how often do you get to sit amongst vintage dresses? Very rarely. Exactly. Because I feel like this is the kind of thing that like the Kardashians would do, like sit amongst beautiful vintage and we, pieces. You said to me, we said before this podcast started that we had to admit finally that we do like the Kardashians. We do. We do. I mean, and listen, like we, so this is another public service announcement. We love the Kardashians, but what I love is that they are making history. Like Kylie Jenner, first self-made billionaire. She even beat Mark Zuckerberg. Sips tea <laughs> or coffee. But that's no, incredible. Tara. Like she's, no, she's not self-made, Tara. She's not. She? No, she's not. If if it wasn't for your sex tape and the whole story, like she also have a sex tape. She, this is not Kim. This I, is Kylie. Do you? Don't you have a sex tape? No. <laughs> no. No. Do you? Oh. I, try, I, I'm not, I don't. You can find it at www. <laughs> you cannot. It does not exist. Um, no, I don't think she's self-made at all. Let's be realistic. This is a girl who is riding on the back of um, a mega famous family, and and no one would know who she was. Yeah. what her story was about. She would never be, she'd just be another normal early 20 something year old girl, really. But but think about it, like the girls that are, oh, girls and guys I suppose, that are also heirs to like the house of Estee Lauder or the house of whoever else that have made the list of like the most wealthy women of, of the world. Like they're also riding on a legacy. And sure. I suppose that's a legacy that's rooted in like Product and a history and all of you that. You know what I'd be she's interested to see? Scandal. I guess. She's, they peddle scandal. But it would be interesting to we see. We buy it. <laughs> we buy it. I do. <laughs> um, I, I'm interested to see how many times she actually goes in and mixes and plays with formulations and is actually involved in the science of it all. Because I know, wasn't it, isn't it backed upon like Colourpop Cosmetics or like one of the other makeup brands and they just literally slap Kylie onto the packaging and whatnot. Yeah, look, I don't think that she is physically involved with testing the colors and coming out with the colors. Then Maybe that's not the point. Team. Yeah. Like, it, it is almost like a collab, like a collab. Mm. You know, and a mega it, successful it, collab. Jennifer Lopez now with Inglot. Like, oh, I have that in my bag, actually. Me too. Which color? The um, it's like beigey, like it's all nude. Oh, it's not red. It's okay, all nude I'll to me. The red. the red is her, but now I've forgotten what it's called. Um, I want to say balamo, but it's not. It's something with a B though, and it's her famous color that she wears. But best believe, I don't think that J Lo is actually in the kitchen mixing the color. <laughs> I think that she, she's not. She goes in and of course approves. Like I wear this, or I don't wear that, or I love this, or I don't love that. But, and that's the value add. But that's the value add. Yeah. You know, when, I get when it. someone slaps their name on a fragrance, like David Beckham is not in there, like, in his underwear. Out, in his underwear. Well, listen, if he was, we want in on that. But, but he's not there, you know? So I think that that's the affiliation and the association is actually what. I mean, look at you and KTP. Do you know what I mean? That got me billions. <laughs> First kid self-made billionaire. <laughs> Absolutely but nowhere listen, near that. Also, but it can also, with that, comes like infamy as well. I yeah. mean, look at this big week now with R. Kelly. Did you see? Oh, it's so upsetting. Oh. It's so upsetting. I this this week has been like a week of hell when it's come to women. Yeah. In this... And it's International Women's Day today. So like we've culminated in this day with a lead up that has just been horrific. I couldn't go. Horrific. I had to say like Twitter. I'm like, guys, I'm done for the month. I can't did do this. Did you tweet that or did you say it? No, I, I always let people. People, you must always let people know you're taking a Twitter break. Doing? Oh, okay, okay. Otherwise, because yeah, you're you you like to you like to get in there on Twitter. I mean, tell me about. We were talking about it the other day. You were. Um, who did you troll? You trolled someone on Twitter. No, so the only trolling fight I've ever had is with Joseph Kahn, acclaimed international video music director. Yes, and as one does. Music video director, yeah. You know, pick your, pick your trolling yes. on levels. No, I had a problem with the fact that he had shot a, a Taylor Swift music video and it was centered around uh, Africa, but there wasn't one black person in the entire video. Yeah. So it looked like this colonial 
train mess, train collision. In Africa. In Africa. Yes. And I was just like, Africa. Yo. And he's like a minority, right? Like, yeah. surely that should be at the forefront of his mind. Exactly. Not one black person in this whole video. I just, so I, po I picked so you my- tweeted him? Yeah. I was a social, social justice warrior and I went straight in. And, I, and he, came came at me. he came he back came at me. He came back at me. But oh then gosh. what was awesome is that a bunch of South Africans came back at him. So he Good. was, so we, it was a mob. How did it end? I ignored his last tweets. <laughs> and I blocked and deleted you, Joseph Khan. Noted. <laughs> I'm sure you sit today and you're sad about that. But listen, I mean, that is, that is like the kind of stuff that goes on, this trolling and all of that. And with R. Kelly now um, and his documentary. Uh, Do you know what I love though? It's called Surviving R. Kelly. Did you see the Gail King interview? Yes, CBS. Oh, I love the way she just sat there. She was just like, beautiful, stoic, graceful woman yeah. watching this monster just freak out around yeah. her. And it just says everything. It just yeah. says everything. And in that moment, I was reminded of like, the amount of stuff that South African women go through. Yeah. You know, and on a daily basis, how we actually fear for our lives. And men have to do better. I'm sorry, men have to do better. I read an article this morning that said, um, uh, uh, men's greatest fear when they get incarcerated is being raped in jail. That is their, they've done surveys, millions, that is their biggest fear. But then the article kind of clapped back and said, well, women fear that on a daily basis. They don't have to be incarcerated. It's something that happens as they walk down the street, you know. Drops mic. Drops mic. <laughs> well, it's a bit difficult it's when it's one of these. Not as effective. Really drop it. They have to rip it out and like. Throw it on it. the floor. <laughs> Which we will never do. Thank you, AV Active. <laughs> Got no loot for extra microphones. Yeah, I loved, you know what, silence for me and not not in the kind of act of domestic abuse or sexual abuse, but silence in that she was just stoic, she listened, she watched. And, and unafraid. Wild. I mean, I, I may have flinched here. Like he was literally like, yeah. I may have flinched. Yeah. She just sat and looked at him. It was, oh, it was an amazing moment for her career. Completely <laughs> amazing. And you know what, someone that can interview someone who is going through such a big thing. I mean, he's now got custody issues and he can't Were you a fan of him? I've got a couple of songs. Ignition is one of my favorites and wonderful as well. So now did you delete it off your phone? So, you know what, funnily enough, it actually came up on my, because I just, when I get in the car, I just uh, do shuffle on yeah, Apple yeah. Music. So yeah. it came up and I was like, oh man, I love this song. And then all of a sudden I was like, can I? Can I still love the song? No, you cannot. And I skipped to the next good. track. I mean, I can still appreciate the good music, but I skipped to the next track. I had to. I had to yeah, because when is the line going to be drawn unless we start like affecting them in their pockets, right? Exactly. The minute you talk money and money becomes a potential, um, potentially at risk, that's when things change. And it's sick to say, but it's true. But isn't so much of this all about money? The blesses, the all this like sexual stuff that happens, babes with Dumo and Mampincha that just happened this week. Oh God. Like money, money and power. For me, power is at the center of everything. Like, yeah. It's always a power struggle. Either someone's giving power, someone's taking power, some, someone wants power. Um, but that's actually what is at the center of it. And like you said, money. But unfortunately, women bear the brunt of this whole thing because structurally nothing is in our favor. So, you know, even if you look at gender pay equality, it's, it's all completely one-sided. Yeah. Physically, men are much stronger than us. And so therefore we have to play that game. And, and, and so you see the result of a babes with and you see um, Arkeley being able to uh, yeah. ex uh, exploit young women. And it's just, I'm glad all of this stuff is coming out. And I think we have social media to thank for that. Yeah. You know, like when Lady Gaga said social media is a toilet, I actually got quite upset. Did you see her in that talk show? She said what? That social media is like the toilet, is a toilet. Yes. Because of the trolls and this and that. But you know what, it's also done a lot of good. It started conversations. And I think conversations are people, because people are keyboard warriors. They're very brave behind their keyboard. It's mm. diff you know, they wouldn't sit here on spilled tea and be like, I want to tell you. They will, they'll tweet it and they'll tweet something. Anonymous but, one, two, three. Exactly. But, but it has sparked those uncomfortable conversations that we have to have. I mean, you and I were talking about it the other day. Campaigns like uh, Muesli's campaign in December about drinking. Like, where do we draw the line? Because what do we believe? What don't we believe? I didn't like that campaign. Yeah. I what were your thoughts? not a fan because I feel that, I mean, people were crying. People thought that she died. Look, I think the impact of it um, is, is incredible in that, like, it just shows you when you're doing a story behind a steering wheel, 
you take your eyes off that road for one second and you, you, die, you die. smash your car. Mm. But I think that there are other ways. Like I did a, I did a radio commercial probably like three, four years ago about not drinking and driving. And it was, um, I recorded a voicemail. And it was like, hi, you've reached Candy or whatever the character was that I played. Um, I can't come to the phone, but leave a message. And then there was a beep. And there was that like awkward, like 10 seconds of silence. And then it was my supposed dad leaving me a voicemail because I had been drinking and driving. And I, I remember that ad. Do you remember that ad? Yes. I totally did that ad. I was the- That was also very triggering, bro. It was very triggering, but, but no one was harmed in that. And it wasn't no. like, um, you know, people thought someone had died or whatever. It was just like, that could be the last time you speak to someone you love. That ad may have made me cry, actually. Yeah. Develop a young tear. Sorry. Well, good. Excellent, actually, because that's what you want. You want... Do people know how much you perform, though? Sorry to interrupt. Like, how much I perform? Yeah, people see you as a... <laughs> On a daily basis. <laughs> You're never off. It's, the offsetting is never in yeah, play. My favorite thing is, you know, you haven't got a voice note from me yet. You, I've got your number now. Yes. You're going to get a voice note in the morning. And I go, good morning, good morning. And that's your good morning message from me. I mean... It's not your day right. No, my friends are typically like, oh, the night before. Uh, <laughs> oh, they have a black coffee <laughs> on a Sunday school night. Hey. <laughs> You're a bit of a rebel, Jenna. I think people don't really know that about you. I'm an undercover dance floor freak. Undercover dance floor freak. Yeah. I, you know what? I love going out, but I don't necessarily feel the need to share all my good times. Okay. I think it's You've got to keep something mysterious about you, I think. Yes. You know, someone that Insta stories from the second they wake up to the second they go to sleep, they leave nothing to the imagination. You're like, oh, you went to gym. Stop it. Words, um, and you know what's the worst when you go into an Instagram story and it's like, tick, 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 oh, tick. No. No, and you have to keep no. going. I mean, I swipe. Yeah, so it's I a bad strategy, swipe. guys. If you're trying to get people into your Instagram stories, don't yeah. do that because I literally go like that. If I can't see how many little things there are, then I'm not about it. The only time I was guilty of that, and I'm going to admit it, here it goes, is <laughs> on my birthday when people shared stories, okay. I re, uh, reposted them, and so I had a lot. Because you were making other people feel good. I was making other be yeah. people feel good because they made me feel good. Correct. Uh, but I learned on my birthday that you can only do 100. Did you know that? Thank goodness there's a limit. <laughs> and some of you are on 99. Yeah. Please don't do that. No, it's the I worst. Also, I also, I'm just like... Like, get what you want to say across, but mm. not in one million little things. I also, I must say, like, I swipe, I swipe past if I see that that's going on. Unless it's a conversation that's really, really interesting, but nothing really ever holds my attention for 100 Instagram. And it also eats all my data, and I'm not about that. And South Africa is one of the most expensive countries for data. I know, it's horrific. Like, it has got to I, change. When I was in New York, I managed to have a Skype call from, like, the Lower East Side, all the way up to like East 86. For how much? On Wi-Fi, because there's so much Wi-Fi in New York. But data That's amazing. South Africa is really expensive, no, and our, our Wi-Fi is not that good. And it's, it's you know what? I, I'm always amazed that like Kenya is the IT hub of Africa. Is it? Yes. Did you not know that Kenya? No. IT hub of Africa. Rwanda's not coming online. South Africa, we are in trouble if we don't take advantage of all the infrastructure that we have and all the potential yeah. we have and really get our act together. But what is the problem? Like, why do we not have good Wi-Fi? Why do we not have <sighs> cheaper data? I mean, we, we are, and I forget this all the time, because I'm like, we are totally first world, but we are a third world country living with first world stuff. The minute the data gets cheaper in this country, the whole game is going to change. Yeah. Our economy will improve. People will be able to run businesses from their phones. Yes. People, it's going to be a game changer. So, I mean, let's just see what happens with the elections. I think the elections are just causing so much anxiety in our people at the moment. Yeah. I cannot wait for it to be done. It is just... But one thing that I'm happy about, well, not happy is maybe the wrong word, is that we're not the only country going through that. Like, look at America. Yeah. Like, look at America. They don't have just eggs on their faces. This is America. <laughs> don't catch me. I love that song. This is America. Apparently, he's Childish Gambino is just quit. Like, he's not... Like, how do you drop a song like that with an amazing video like that? And there's like... And just be like, <laughs> peace. Yeah. I'm out. You know what? <laughs> you always leave people wanting more. I think that's the trick. And that's what we've got to do on, uh, on Spill Tea, because we're coming to the end of our chat. Of our chat. I mean, how does the time fly? They say time flies when you're having fun. But on these particular seats, time flies really, really quickly. You are amazing. You're amazing. And you're an amazing... Oh, and before <laughs> I, I want to finish my point, I don't oh. think people see you as this consummate MC, like, and you do an amazing job, and you're so Thank professional you. and incredible, and I enjoy you. Thank I've you. seen some diabolical MCs out there. <laughs>
<laughs> but what I want to say is people also don't know how much theatre you do, yes. how much voice work you do, and thank you're a performer you. and you're talented, and I stand for talented people. So thank you for having me. You are talented <laughs> and incredible and an intelligent woman, and I wouldn't have wanted to share spilt tea with anyone other than Jenna Dover on International Women's Day. Cheers. So let's cheers. Cheers. I love that. To women. To women. To, what's that quote? To strong women. May we be them, may we know them, may we raise them. And that's to my Greek family. Yes, quotes are hunkers. Yeah. It's quote, quote, a hunk, hunk, hunk. No, it's like poker hunters, but with quote. Quote, quote a hunters. Quote a hunters. Quote a hunters. And don't go don't to dead, dead food. <laughs> Guys, <laughs> thank you for tuning in. We will be doing this next week, same time, same place. Jenna Dover, all the amazing dresses and the women who have worn these dresses. Oh, yes. Um, it's been an amazing time to spill tea, and we'll see you next week. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>